Yo, what's up, guys? In today's video, I got a bunch of Chicago Bulls news. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about and breaking down how the Bulls were voted the losers of the NBA offseason. Also, talking about how Patrick Williams was voted a favorite to win the most improved player. But before I jump into today's video, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Also, leave a quick like below today's video. It takes a second and helps me out a lot. And some comments and questions below today's video talking about all the articles and topics I'm about to jump into also check out my last video if you guys missed it i was talking about a bunch of bulls recent injury updates talking about how the bulls are being urged to sign markeith morris and dale and terry impressing at summer league but either way let's just jump right into today's video and before i break down this article let me know below today's video your guys' thoughts and just grading the chicago bulls offseason moves and signings below today's video because the chicago bulls offseason i'm gonna be real i felt like it was average it wasn't surprising but i knew a lot of bulls fans were expecting big trades or big moves or big signings because of last offseason but the Bulls were very just I'd say limited on assets the salary cap you know the Bulls ownership clearly didn't want to go over the tax and pay it and this article did come out from SB Nation, and they did list the Chicago Bulls as the losers of the NBA offseason. Obviously, last offseason, the Bulls were very busy adding DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo, and Alex Caruso. The Bulls were also the top seed in the East for about the first half of last year. And then, at All-Star break, the team just completely fell apart due to Lonzo's injury, Alex Caruso's injury. I felt like everyone was pretty much getting injured during that little part of the season. And I thought it was obvious the Bulls needed to get better this offseason to take the next step to really, really try and compete to win a championship. But instead, they mostly stayed the same. I mean, the team does deserve some major credit for resigning the best free agent on the market in Zach Levine. But that was kind of expected, especially because many other NBA teams didn't have salary cap to even offer him a max contract. And then the Chicago Bulls chose not to use their full mid-level exception to avoid the luxury tax, which was very disappointing but expected, honestly. All the Bulls really did this offseason was draft Dale and Terry. That was kind of a surprise in my opinion. I made many videos talking about potential draft prospects for the Bulls, and I did not mention his name at all. That kind of came out of nowhere. I am starting to like the draft pick, and I have liked what I've seen from him in Summer League, but pretty much all the Bulls did this offseason, obviously, was re-signing Derrick Jones Jr., which was, you know, that was mostly the same team as last year, and then signing Andre Drummond and Goran Dragic. And don't get me wrong, I like both these signings, but at the same time, they're both just meh. You know, they're not big names. They're not really going to help out this team that much. I do believe they're both good bench upgrades and good veterans to help out this team. But looking at all the other moves the rest of the Eastern Conference has made and then what the Bulls did, it's definitely a big disappointment in my opinion. And especially just seeing them being cheap at the same time when they could have added a lot more talent in my opinion. And ClutchSports.com did grade the Bulls re-signing Zach Levine a B plus. I'm going to be real. I don't understand that. I believe it should be an A plus just because he was the best free agent on the market. And the Bulls had to make this move. I mean, Zach Levine's only 27. He's a walking bucket when healthy. 25, 5, and 5 a game. I believe he is going to continue to get better and better. I'm expecting a big NBA season from him, especially with him being in the gym, already post his offseason knee surgery or whatever you want to call that, his little knee scope. He's looking healthy healthy in the gym i'm expecting him to take the next step and then after that you know the bulls did have another surprising move in signing goran Dragic. i mean it is on a veterans minimum so i'm not that mad he only appeared in 21 games last season he's definitely getting up there in age he is 36 years old he did play pretty well for the brooklyn nets in the nba playoffs so that's a big positive and he is also a 36 percent three-point shooter the only thing that i don't get you know obviously the goran Dragic signing is looking to make more and more sense with all the terrible lonzo ball injury updates that just keep coming out yeah, i'd expect lonzo to miss training camp and maybe even the start of the NBA season but the Bulls I'd say guard rotation is already very heavy I mean they just added Goran Dragic they got Lonzo if he can get healthy they also got Io, Kobe White, Dalen Terry, Zach Levine, Javante Green, DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso they are very guard heavy I also saw the Bulls did promise Goran Dragic I saw I saw like 20 to 25 minutes a night it's definitely going to be interesting to see what the Bulls do with him I'd say the Andre Drummond signing is the biggest and best move of the offseason 
offseason. I mean, they did grade the Andre Drummond signing a C plus. I mean, Andre Drummond, he's only 28 years old, and I can't believe that. I felt like he was already 30 plus. You know, this past season for Brooklyn, he did play really solid. He did average 12 points and about 10 rebounds a game. I think everyone knows Andre Drummond. He's an elite rebounder that's going to help out this Bulls bench. So I'm not really mad at this signing. But at the end of the day, the Bulls front office said they were going to go into this offseason and be very aggressive and add some rim protection and three-point shooting. While I do believe Drogic is a solid three-point shooter, I don't think he's anything crazy, especially another point guard to add to this roster. And same with Andre Drummond. You know, he is a big body. He's an elite rebounder that's definitely going to help out the Bulls on the glass, but he's not a good rim protector. I don't know. These moves are solid, solid veterans, but just nothing I really expected. Let me know your thoughts below today's video about the Bulls being voted the losers of this offseason. And the final topic in today's video is about Patrick Williams being a favorite for the 2022-2023 Most Improved Player. And this doesn't surprise me. I mean, I thought it was obvious. The Bulls pretty much are banking on the development and the future of Patrick Williams to really take this team to the next level because DeMar is getting up there in age. Vooch is also getting up there in age. He struggled last year and he is on a one-year deal. And the Bulls, it was reported that all they had to do was include Patrick Williams in a trade package and they could have got Rudy Gobert. And I'm quite happy that never happened because the trade for Rudy Gobert was a lot. But it does seem like the Bulls front office is really banking on Patrick Williams to take that next step. And I truly believe he can because on the recent episode of Sports Illustrated's NBA show, Patrick Patrick Williams was among his three favorites to win the NBA Most Improved Player, and I truly hope so. I saw a bunch of reporters have been saying to NBA writers saying how they really expect him to take that next jump, and if the Bulls want to contend for a championship, they need that to happen because Patrick Williams has all the tools and skills to be a very good player in the NBA for a long time. I think Bulls fans tend to forget he's only 20 years old. By the start of this season, he will be 21, but nonetheless, he is a 6'7 small forward. He does weigh 215, and he does have a 7 foot wingspan he was the fourth pick back in 2020 obviously he did miss pretty much all this past season due to a wrist injury but even though he only played 17 games for this past season I really liked what I saw from him especially the end of season and in the NBA playoffs I really like his jump shot I still do believe he needs to speed it up a bit but nonetheless he's a very good shooter in those 17 games this season sure it was limited minutes shots and everything like that but in those 17 games he did still average nine points four rebounds one assist shooting 53% from the field and about 52% from three-point range and that's amazing and even on his career he's always been a very good shooter sure it's limited shots mostly open shots due to DeMar, Zach, and Vooch but on his career he has played 88 games still averaged nine points four rebounds and one assist and he still has been shooting about 50% from the field and 41% from three-point range those are very good shooting percentages and I believe Hopefully, Billy Donovan does run more plays surrounding him and just let him handle the ball more often to take some pressure off Zach and DeMar. Let me know your thoughts below today's video about these two articles I covered and broke down. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Have a good one.